You may have heard the story of the group of five young women from USF who are now known as the Tampa Five. These activists are currently fighting felony charges after protesting the state of Florida's defunding of DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion programs, back on March 6th. These five women, five women could face between six and 11 years in prison if convicted of felony charges, including ba- uh, charges of battery on a law enforcement officer, as well as other charges. Now, three of the five members of the Tampa Five are here with us this morning in studio. Gia Davila, Chris Lee Carpio, and Lauren Pinheiro. Uh, the other members are Laura Rodriguez and Jeannie Kidda. They are not with us, but the three, Gia, Chris Lee, and Lauren, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Great to have you here with us. So um, I guess I don't know where we would start because we you've got some court. You, this all happened back in March and we'll get into that. But you're going to be going. Uh, the trial is about to happen pretty soon. Is that correct? Yeah. So yes. our trial is actually starting on December 12th. That's when jury selection begins. And from there, the trial will begin. OK, so this is finally going to happen after uh, months of in this in between time after what happened, of course, on March six. So I guess let's 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 talk about that because you know I, I, some of our listeners may know, but many we can't assume people will know. But so what's told that the uh, so you you're none of you are at USF anymore, but three of you were students back in the springtime, uh, and I think this has to do with some of the policies of Governor Ron DeSantis. So one of you just pick it up and just tell us what happened on that day. Sure. Yeah, I can tell you a little bit more about it. So um, we're. Uh, me and Lauren are members of Tampa Bay SDS. Uh, SDS called the protest that day. And that's uh, Students for Democratic Society. Yeah, Students for a Democratic Society. We're a national organization. And at the University of South Florida, we were working to increase black enrollment on our campus. It's like extremely disproportionately low uh, in comparison to like the surrounding area of Tampa. Um, and so... Like in the past year, we've seen a lot of bills that are being kind of pushed through by DeSantis uh, that like attack the people in Florida in various ways from like anti-trans bills to uh, anti-DEI bills. So when we saw this bill, HB 999, which was the bill that attacks diversity, equity, sorry, diversity, equity and inclusion, um, as well as like tenure for professors ethnic studies, um, multicultural clubs even. Uh, We saw it as like a real issue for students and we knew we needed to call a protest and we really wanted um, to get a meeting with the school's president to get like a firm uh, commitment, a firm statement that she was not going to follow through with this legislation um, because it's not what students want. And so we called a protest and we marched um, across campus into the like lobby of the building that her office is in and we were calling for a meeting with her and saying like um we kind of like listed out our demands and said like okay we're here because um and then after being in the room for like not even two minutes um we were like brutally attacked by the police um just grabbed and thrown to the ground uh i was arrested inside the building and then three other people were arrested outside. Um, And so we were charged with, uh, so after that we were taken to jail. We were charged with a felony of battery on a law enforcement officer, a misdemeanor of peacefully resisting arrest, as well as another misdemeanor of disrupting a school or campus function. And I was also charged with trespassing despite the fact I was a student at the time. Yeah. Okay. So very serious charges here. And I understand at one point in this process, um, there's been, I don't know, the, was the prosecutor or came to you and said that you guys, if you admit to guilt, you, this, you wouldn't go through this, this trial process. Um, is that, is that correct? So it was never guaranteed. Yeah. Um, it was raised, oh, we could potentially consider this if all the parties involved, including even the police, including um, the university, agree to it um, uh, of a potential pre-file diversion. And it was never guaranteed. It's like, we'll just begin discussing it. But first, what right. you have to do is say you did battery upon law enforcement, that um, SDS initiated the violence that day, and that you're sorry to each of the cops who were there. And these were cops who we had seen attack, grope, throw students around, put them in chokeholds, multiple chokeholds. Um, so we said, 
And, and we knew that, um, you know, this was a violation of our First Amendment rights from beginning to end. And SDS had done nothing wrong that day. In right. fact, the students actually did the right thing that day. So we said, no, we're not going to write any of these letters. Um, I'm actually a camp or I was a campus worker. And this um, is Chris Lee we're speaking yes. with here. Chris Lee Carpio. Yes. Um, I was a member of um, Ask Me Local 3342. I worked in the admissions office at USF um, and I had union protections and um, they had put me on paid administrative leave. So any such letter would have guaranteed that I'd be fired. Right, right. So that's that's part, very important for the context because I think um, when learning that, 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 you know, because you guys are facing very serious charges here, prison mm -hmm. and and, you know, the, the idea that if you pled, you know, guilty or whatever, you, you, I guess not whatever, but yes, in the situation here, yeah, you get out of that. So some people were saying, like, well, why are they pursuing this and going all the way with this? But obviously it has very real life consequences mm -hmm. if you were to do that. And if you don't believe that you were guilty of this, then mm -hmm. why should you do mm -hmm. this, obviously, and commit? Yeah. Yeah, and at the same time, the students were also going to, through um, code of conduct hearings on campus where we could have been expelled. Um, so that was also a reason why we didn't want to write an apology letter, because if we admit, had admitted, admitted guilt on paper, that could have been used against us in these hearings, and we could have been expelled, right? If we said, we did this, we're guilty, they could have easily expelled us uh, because of that. So we had all of this going on in the background where they could have fired Chris Lee, we could have been expelled, um, and that was also a big part of why we didn't want to apologize. Yeah, absolutely. Again, we're speaking with three members of the Tampa Five who are facing prison, potential prison charges here uh, based on a, an incident that happened at USF campus back in March. Uh, you know, I, By the way, I reached out to USF to see if they wanted to make a comment at this point. They did not. Nobody got back to me on that. So here we are. Um, let's see here. Uh, these court proceedings here. So you've gone through, obviously, so throughout the, the year you've had, I know you've had some press conferences. Let's talk about, though, this has become... Um, and let me ask you this. I mean, so going back to what you said, Gia, you talked about all these policies that DeSantis has done. And he, as we know, as we've documented on the show and anybody's sentient has seen the governor has done a lot of things um, in his higher education uh, that had some people are considering very radical. And where is the pushback? You know, we, the, the Democrats are very they're a minority, super minority. So they can't really do much, although they fight against that legislatively. So it's on our college campuses, I would think that naturally you're going to see some resistance. I don't know, you know, how much we have seen. This is obviously you are seen to be a visible presence of this. And you have actually some of you have even traveled now out of the state mm -hmm. to talk about this incident. And you, you know, talk about that. So you, you the Tampa Five has become kind of a thing nationally amongst folks who are paying attention to what's going on here in Florida. Yeah, so it's been a really amazing opportunity to get to travel and talk about our case. Um, it kind of started where people were just like inviting us to speak at all these events. Um, and so we decided we, we've we been organizing around our case ever since uh, we were arrested or charged. And so we wanted to raise our like awareness about our case to a national level because we really see this as a national issue. Like, of course, we've seen how these bills have played out across Florida um, since their passing. We're now seeing like the material um I don't know, causes of these bills. Uh, but I think people across the country are dealing with the same things. Like all through, I mean, just like Texas, um, for example, as soon as there's a bill here in Florida that attacks the people of Florida, there's a copycat bill in Texas that attacks the people of Texas. And so we had a lot of people who wanted us to speak about diversity because they were facing the same struggles at their university. Um, so yeah, and we've had amazing support through this. I mean, here in Florida and to a national level, we've had countless unions sign on, sign petitions to get the charges dropped for us. Uh, teachers hosting us, speaking in high schools and colleges across the country. So it's been a really amazing experience to meet so many dedicated organizers who are willing to fight to make sure that we do not see prison time. How about any elected officials? Chrisley, yeah, go ahead. Yes, so, um, oops, Representative Anna Eskamani has been vocal about our case, um, and we actually also have um, a webinar coming up with Maxwell Frost soon. Um, Congressman Maxwell Frost yeah. from the Orlando area? Yep, yeah. exactly, and I think that's on December 9th. Um, and then on our national tour as well, we also met with um, elected officials in other cities, which was exciting. Um, we met with city council members in Minneapolis. We got the support of even one of the Board of Education members, such as Adriana Cerillo. Um, 
Uh, and we've gotten a lot of union endorsements as well. One of the most recent is um, United Teachers of Los Angeles has endorsed dropping the charges on the Tampa Five, and they represent 35,000 um, workers and teachers across um, L.A., and we've already gotten the endorsement, too, of um, West Central Florida here in the Tampa Bay area and also North Central in North Florida. So um, as far as elected officials that have been outspoken, I think that is it, but we're hoping to get more, um, and especially if people could send letters to the state attorney as well. I do think it's interesting that uh, you mentioned uh, Frost and Escamani, who are from Orlando. I'm not hearing anybody from Tampa or Hillsborough County here. Mm-hmm. No, no, uh, nobody wants to go on the limb there in terms. I mean, in terms of elected officials. We've I, had yeah. sorry to interrupt. Yeah. We've had a little bit of support here in Tampa. I know Angela Birdsong has been pretty vocal in support of us, and she's the uh, the Black Caucus Democratic yeah. Hillsborough Chair, she's I believe. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, again, uh, we're speaking with uh, Gia Davila, Chris Lee Carpio, and Lauren Pinheiro. Uh, and we will take some phone calls here. We're here with the, the three members of the Tampa Five till, for about 11.35 or so. And, uh, so we welcome your phone calls at 813-239-9663. Um, it yeah. must feel good to have uh, all of that support. But I, w- I wonder, are you guys, um, where's your level of fear does that come up at night when you're trying to go to sleep tell us about that (laughs) yeah i mean it's definitely scary right we are facing five to ten years in prison that's a lot to sit with and understand but truly throughout all of this seeing the support across the country has been the main thing grounding us Mm -hmm. um we can very clearly see through our speaking tour that we did across the country that desantis and his policies are unpopular and that people believe strongly in our case they believe that students shouldn't go to protest uh sorry shouldn't go to prison for protesting that we have a right to free speech and so knowing that we have the entire country really standing behind us showing support you know organizing call-ins bail funds all of these things for us that's been the main thing giving us hope throughout all this process yeah. Have you been trolled as well, I imagine? <laughs> I yeah. mean, of course, right? <laughs> uh, mainly only on social media. I would say in person, there's less of that. Um, but it's easier to hide behind a screen. Well, Have that's you learned great. anything about that, about that experience being sort of trolled on social media? Like, who are these people? <laughs> I mean, for me, I... I see that the support we have is bigger than the trolls. And so that's what I try to focus on. Um, And I think the movement is more important than just someone commenting one random thing on Instagram, right? Um, So keeping in mind the student movement at large and, you know, all these protests that have been happening, even, you know, the day after we were arrested. Well, they were arrested because I was added a month later to the case. But um, how did that work out? Uh, You know, (laughs) tell us about that. Yeah. um, So it was about a month later. um, I was continuing to protest on campus because the others were banned from campus. Actually, they were told they couldn't even go to class, couldn't speak to the professors. But I was still allowed on campus. I was attending protests. I was speaking to the press. I did a lot of interviews in those first couple of weeks. Um, And about a month later, I was sitting in a women's and gender studies class, which I find quite ironic um, in hindsight because that's one of the programs DeSantis wants to shut down. Uh, But I was sitting in class when I got an email from the school um, informing me that they had sent a direct file to the state attorney's office, um, and I was being charged with the exact same charges as the um, other four. Are are the charges, are they... They're not all the same, right? Some of you have a little bit different charges, or or are they all the same? They're they actually the same. okay. Yeah, the same, and but, uh, I'm sorry. Did you want to? Yeah, I was just going to say I I was originally charged with an additional trespassing charge, but it was since dropped. Um, and three three of the five actually have two case uh, charges of felony, uh, so two counts of the felony, which is why they have ten years. Whereas the other two, we just have me and Gia. We just have the one felony count, which makes oh, just it one five, felony, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> which just makes one, it one year one. in prison. <laughs> I know one year so far, five years. Uh, let's go. To, we've got, uh, uh, let's see, a, a phone call here. David from Dade City. Hi, David. Yeah, you want to put your phone on? Uh, thank you for having these ladies on. Um, I just feel like, uh, you know, this country is built on protests, like the Boston Tea Party. And, I mean, if these women go to prison, that's like political prisoners. And it's the kind of stuff, you know, DeSantis is, is bitching about with, um, you know, China and Iran. So... I don't know. He's 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 like a little uh, dictator. Um, I call him Desantis because he, <laughs> he's kind of awful. <laughs> Okay, yeah, David, appreciate the phone call. So I, I would say this, though. I mean, some people who, again, not familiar with the charges, and I don't know how much you want to get into the details, but, um, uh, again, what is it in terms of an officer battery on an officer, is that one the, uh, which is a felony charge? That seems pretty serious. I mean, you know, um, uh, so uh, that's where, obviously, you disagree and say that you guys didn't do that, and I guess you're saying that there was more on their part that was being the aggressor. Yeah, they were in, 
you know, our lawyer is saying that in the cases of cops who are using um, excessive force, and in our case, we think, you know, like people being slammed onto the ground and like they don't even, you know, they're like skinny and, you know, I'm referring to, <laughs> I'm referring to Eugia, you know, they, their bodies could, oh, and Lauren too, you know, is tiny. Um, people could have been seriously or were hurt that day. Um, in cases like that, you can actually, it, there is legal precedent for um, defending yourself and what, we were doing was just trying to get out of the building, you know, and we have a lot of video footage that shows that. So the cops think that, um, you know, like uh, trying to get away and like touching them in that process is the same as battery. And we don't agree. We think that we were just trying to get out of there. We think that we have a lot of um, video footage that shows that and absolves us. Um, that's why we're not scared to take things to trial and we want justice. Um, so, you know, we they're trying to say that we're the aggressors and that's just absolutely not true. The student that they grabbed when we were just standing around giving speeches was in the middle of talking when the cop just pulled her off her feet. She was in the middle of speaking. So as far as we're concerned, um, we did not do battery upon law enforcement. And uh, they're, they're writing on the fact that the charge says um, striking or touching. So they think any touching mm. is the same as what they did. And we think it's wrong. Right. Yeah. And uh, just for a little bit more context as well, like um, our lawyer has defined like the force that they used as deadly force. Um, like I was grabbed from behind, um, lifted like six inches off the ground and slammed face first to the ground. Um, and the chief of police restrained me with one arm and groped me with the other. Like the things that the cops did were so vile and to charge us with battery on a law enforcement officer is just ridiculous. Yeah. And it's very clear to us that we were not a physical threat that day. Yeah. We were just a political threat. Um, we are not violent people. Like we, we were standing around holding signs. Um, so it's, it's clear to us that the reason why they went after us is because of our politics, right? That's why they added me a month later. Because if I had stopped talking to the press, if I stopped attending protests, would they have added me? Probably not. Has uh, USF President uh, Real Law made any comments about this case? No, she has not. However, um, and the day they released this report was the same day they fired me in violation of my union contract. Um, USF did release a report saying that they um, did an internal investigation of what happened to the USF protesters. Um, everything was all our fault, of course, is what they were saying. Um, but the police need more training anyway. That was how the report concluded, was the police didn't do anything unauthorized such as chokeholds, which is not true. We have like video footage showing, you know, everything that they, or not even everything, just the tip of the iceberg. And they still concluded that the police need more training. Yeah, um, she actually did also make one comment um, to, at this time, uh, it was like, I think right before they like released their findings or whatever, uh, their internal investigation, but she went into a faculty meeting, which again, at the time we were going through these code of conduct hearings and some of the people who were deciding if we would be expelled or not were faculty members who could have potentially been in this meeting. But um, she basically said that the disruption that we had caused um, was comparable to an active shooter situation. And then it rolled out an active shooter protocol, which is a blatant lie because students are notified when an active shooter protocol is in, put in place. Um, and there's like cops in SWAT gear and mm. stuff. Like it's very clear when there's an active shooter situation on campus. It's also like a real active shooters are like a real threat and something that has like devastated so many schools in this country. So I, I personally find it extremely vile that she would compare us to an active shooter situation. And again, I want to tell our listeners here, again, we're speaking with three members of the Tampa Five, Gia Davila, Chris Carpio, and Lauren Pinheiro. I did reach out to USF. Uh, you know, so people are saying, why? Well, I'm not hearing USF's point of view on this, uh, you know, last for a statement here. I know they released an, an uh, earlier in, during the this whole saga uh, to publications, I guess at this point is getting near trial. They didn't want to comment. So uh, we do have a listener here who wants to make a comment or a question here. Uh, Joe from Lakeland here on uh, The Skinny here on WMNF. Yeah, hey, uh, good morning. And uh, I want to commend the ladies for their their stance and posture against the oppression, really. And like the caller said before, you know, we're based on protest Boston Tea Party's great example. We celebrate that. But uh, police have a long history of filing LEOs, you know, law battery on a law enforcement officer. It's kind of to cover their ass, so to speak, excuse my language. But um, you guys should file uh, aggravated assault charges on those officers. 
is what I would say that uh, your lawyer should should file those charges individually on those officers. Uh, for Interesting. Have you guys thought about that? Right now, we're focused on getting the charges dropped, so that's our main pri priority. Um, we just don't want to go to prison, but that's our main. Yeah, and I'd say that would be leverage to get those charges dropped, actually, for you. Thank you for the call. All right, thank, thank you. you. For the yeah, call. thank you. So all this has been really public uh, for you guys, and, and you guys are in a unique situation because the person prosecuting you is also running for, uh, mm -hmm. is running in an election. And this morning, um, you were actually in the same room as uh, the state attorney, Susie Lopez, for the 13th District, obviously um, put in there by DeSantis at Cafe Con Tampa in downtown Tampa. It's an early morning meeting. What's it like to sit in front of the room with her? And, and what was the temperature like in that room? What kind of questions were asked um, in there this morning? Yeah, it was a really interesting experience. I mean, we asked um, in front of everybody some questions about why she's continued to pursue our case, um, why she's like doubled the felonies and everything. Um, it was a really divided room, I think. I mean, there were people asking really good questions about like, oh, I'm trying to remember uh, some of the specific ones, but, you know, there was even somebody who asked her like questions about how how she kind of reconciles with the fact that she was, she's not an elected official that she was put in place by DeSantis. And she was kind of like, well, you know, we can see what I've done here in Tampa, but you know, I don't really know what she's talking about with that statement because look at what she's done to us. I mean, normal students were young people. I mean, I'm 22 years old facing felony charges for simply protesting on campus. Like this is what Susie Lopez is doing in Tampa. Yeah, I mean, this, this is really hardcore. Have you, I know, again, you're no longer in school right now. Are, are you concerned? You have to be. I, it's kind of a silly question, I guess, but in terms of your future, in terms of your uh, career opportunities here with this, not only, I mean, obviously, we'll see how the court situation plays out. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm, so I'll just leave it at that. But, I mean, this has got to be something else overhanging you as you, uh, as you progress here going up to the trial date. Yeah, and it's why our stance is um, drop the charges. We're not sorry. We're not guilty. We have nothing to apologize for. Um, our jobs shouldn't be threatened. Like the students' degrees shouldn't be threatened. Um, and I was fired in violation of my union contract. Like I was not given due process. Um, and we're filing a, we have filed a grievance that is going to arbitration because of that. Um, you know, the university is treating us like we're guilty, but we're not. And this has had uh, effects on us not being able to get unemployment, right. not being denied you, yeah, for housing. Yeah, okay. um, people, you know, I was not the only one of the five who was fired that day. Laura Rodriguez was also fired that day. Um, now, what did Laura, yeah. Laura did the same position as you, or um, no? Laura wasn't union. Uh -huh. um, yeah, Laura was working um, as a substitute teacher at the time. I think that um, people who do not support us may have actually called in. What you know, I think other people who didn't agree with what we did went in and were involved in that. But um, you know, this has had a huge impact on our lives. We want um, to be able to go back to our lives. We want students to be able to protest and exercise their First Amendment rights. We want to be able to go back to work. We want to be able to, um, you know, go back to campus and to a <laughs> school where it's public property, like our money paid for it. Like I worked at USF for almost seven years and this is how I, you know, how I make my departure. It's not right. And yeah. uh, we want what's ours. As you travel the country, um, you know, you show up to a protest, you don't necessarily know that you're going to get arrested. But when we talk about cases like yours, I think people start to think about the idea, am I willing to get arrested um, today? We've heard a lot of it in, in the context of the Israel Hamas um, protests. Um, as you travel the country and talk to young people, do you feel like your situation and the gravity of, of what you face um, has subdued or amplified and increased like the appetite to be able uh, to participate in civil disobedience and then even get arrested? Yeah, I think it's only invigorated the movement. Um, you know, the same week that we were, that they were arrested, people had protests, like in response to what, what happened to us that day. Um, and they've only continued to protest. About a week after our protests on March 6, uh, students at FSU had the exact same protests where they went into their president's office and they got a meeting with their provost. So students aren't saying, oh my God, should we stop protesting? Like, I'm scared. Like, should we not go into the streets? Students are asking us advice. They're saying, how can we get a lawyer? What tactics did you use to fight this repression? How do you set up a bail fund? So if anything, students are more 
um, invigorated to fight, to protest. They see that this is important. They know the history of protests, that protest is how we've won every major right in this country. Um, and I, don't, I think it's been very inspiring to see that people aren't afraid because of what happened to us. And um, obviously you're we're focused on getting the charges dropped, but have either of you felt compelled to run for office? <laughs> No, okay. <laughs> not particularly. Yeah, we we'll get to this trial first, Ray, and then maybe they can contemplate that. You know, I will say a uh, listener wrote in and said, you know, we met, I asked a moment ago about if anybody local uh, elected officials had uh, spoken, spoken out in support. Uh, we're, getting, we're getting told that Pat Kemp, Hillsborough County yes. Commissioner, has been supportive of the Tampa Five. Yes, uh, she showed up at our last court appearance, actually, and spoke at a rally that we had outside. Okay, so yeah, I, mean, I just think that's really uh, you know important to note uh, because, as you said, okay, so you guys were at this cafe con Tampa, which is kind of a, a very Tampa political establishment uh, in a room, uh, and you thought you felt that the room was divided. Is that, is that accurate in terms of your case? Well, people didn't talk about our yeah, case in particular. Yeah. Um, I think they were divided about about the yeah, state attorney okay. about the state attorney. Yes, yeah, um, asking different questions. Um, we got the sense that most of the questions were not, you know, she kind of got defensive. And then she certainly got defensive when um, our second question came around where we asked, um, how do you feel about your election prospects, given that you haven't dropped the charges and we have endorsements from the NAACP, ACLU, et cetera. Yeah. And she just said, oh, we'll see about that. <laughs> Basically, she dodged the question. Um, but we know that it was divided because after the event was done, a lot of people came up to us afterwards to introduce themselves and give us their business cards. Um, which we weren't expecting, but, you know, like the things that we were protesting are not, we didn't think they were controversial. Diversity programs, like ethnic studies, things won long ago. Um, and I think, you know, we're not the only people interested in keeping them around. And actually, the uh, D DEI specifically, though, that is, well, I don't know. And you can tell me, because I know some of this came up uh, in 2020, right, with the George Floyd protests where uh, uh, colleges and also businesses, all, that all of a sudden became something that was important and they wanted to implement. And then we've seen this furious backlash from the DeSantis administration, as you said, and it's been echoed by other red states, uh, specifically in terms of uh, combating those things. Uh, and it's interesting, though, because you will see that in corporate America, which doesn't have to necessarily answer to legislatures. Uh, some of them are, are doubly down on that, though. They still believe that's a, a, a principle that they want to continue forward. So this is, again, part of this I don't want to use that cliche red state, blue state divide, which was the echo of last night's uh, debate between DeSantis and Governor Gavin Newsom of California. But um, it seems like that is part of what's happening here in Florida. And again, I, I bring it back to the fact that uh, with super majorities in the Florida legislature, you can have uh, passionate speeches against these policies. And we have heard you mentioned in Representative Anna Oscamani has been a very articulate spokesperson against those. They don't have the numbers up there in the state. And the fact is, not to uh, sadden uh, liberals here, but uh, it, the state only becomes, com, continues to become more uh, Republican in terms of voter registration. It's at 680,000 now as of the end of October. That is the far biggest margin in the history of the state of Florida being Republican oriented. So in terms of uh, these legislators paying a price, I mean, Ron DeSantis may be paying a price because his, obviously his presidential campaign is not going very well. Uh, but that is something that, you know, uh, is, is the way it's playing out, going back to DEI, which you guys were protesting about. Um, hey, we got another call here. Let's go to uh, Julie in Tampa. Julie, you're on the skinny here on WMNF. Hey, guys, I may have missed this, but are they collecting donations due to the fact I assume their attorneys and the cases going to be um, a lot of money. Yeah, is there a social media account or something where people can connect with you and click on some links? Yes, so we have um, a website, defendthetampa5.org, and that's five the digit. Um, and on that, we have a donate page where people can donate via um, Cash App, um, Venmo, and I think, too, people can contact us if they want to send a check, but most donations have Checks been electronic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a listener wrote in, uh, ask, uh, and it's kind of the same question about a defense fund, but said, uh, any USF alumni helping out with that at all? Have you heard from former USF people? Not really? Okay. okay. <laughs> not that I'm, I'm aware of. 
Um, we've gotten a lot of support from like faculty and people across USF. Um, you know, the USF Faculty Senate actually um, had a unanimous vote against the same bill we were protesting, House Bill 999. Um, but we've heard reports from them that they're being encouraged to not talk about our case. Um, you know, like the, the students were told you can't communicate with your professors and they had professors who reached out to them and said like, I know we're not supposed to reach out to you, but I'm, I want you to know that we're here for you, you know? So yeah. um, I think we have a lot of support, but um, a lot of people haven't been able to come forward. How would this have played out? Let, let's just say the police hadn't rushed you and the president had stepped outside of her office. How would this have played out? Have you thought about that? Yeah, I think uh, it would have played out just like it's played out at like a lot of other universities, uh, FSU in particular. Like uh, we kind of said before, they had like the same action that we had, and they got a meeting with their provost. Um, and like actually, come to find out, the university president wasn't even in her office that day. She had left for vacation early. So you know, it's really disappointing that all of this, these attacks from the police, like. She wasn't even in her office, you know, and, you know, these attacks on diversity programs, diversity programs are so basic. Like we were actually, we've been fighting for a long time to improve our diversity mm -hmm. programs at our university uh, and to increase black enrollment. And so, you know, to be like ignored, disregarded for so many years at the university while we're, you know, we're concerned students who care about the student body who really want to make a positive change on campus. Like we're not hateful protesters. Like we're trying to make things better for students. Uh, how is that not in the interest of the university president who's supposed to be taking care of students? It's just ridiculous. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up right here. We have been speaking with Gia Davila, Chris Lee Carpio, and Lauren Pinheiro. They are three of the five members of the Tampa Five. They're going to be going to court uh, very soon here in the next few weeks. And the issues that you've been hearing for the last half hour or so, uh, they're going to be uh, defending their lives, so to speak, in terms of their, their personal freedom here for the, uh, these protests they had at USF. So, uh, ladies, I want to really thank you for.